not always here for episode 59 wow, jesus man. christ we're hello, getting out hello. there um thank you for having me again mark yeah man anytime you can make it it's awesome i need i need someone to talk to i get bored by myself <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean what i meant to say is i enjoy talking with you all the time uh, uh thanks no man it's a it's a drive for you dude i uh, i appreciate you always coming out here um uh, especially playing with the kids playing with jake mm-hmm. uh yeah, what uh, and today, yeah, we didn't know what was gonna happen, but uh, it was cool that it worked out. Yeah. Um, and dude, honestly, uh, I'm glad when I remembered. I think it was late last night or or this morning. I remember that we had plans to do the podcast, and you were gonna come over. And uh, I didn't know, man, my, my my neck, my upper neck has been so jacked up. Um, and if it just feels like everything's been off, I haven't been able to get it fixed with adjustments. Like acupuncture helped, adjustments helped, um, stretching and yoga helped a little bit, uh, but it's still it's recurring. And, and last night was so bad that I and I had like a headache, and I just I didn't even I, I went through the yoga, but I couldn't even roll, um, and I was just in a shitty mood. But then this morning I woke up, and I was like, you know what? I am gonna get adjusted later today, but. It's so tight right now. I couldn't even do that on my own. I said, but I have a whole morning to myself. Why am I not doing yoga? I was mm-hmm. like, look at everything that's at my disposal right now. Besides the the free time. I mean, not really free time because it's, it's taken out of my writing time, my work time. Um, but I went into the hot tub and then I did the cold water therapy, jumping into the, well, easing myself into the, the cold pool and just working on my breathing. And then back into the hot tub and stretching the whole time and doing yoga. Um I went onto the grass. I did my uh, breathing exercise, and dude, I uh, held my breath. I timed it. It was like a minute and thirty-seven seconds. Um, and I used to be happy with like getting a minute. So every time I just try going a little bit longer, dude. After doing that, <clears throat> I was getting all kinds of releases. And for the next four hours, like I felt good. And I think that I, I think I had texted you right afterwards to make sure you were coming, because uh, then I was pumped. I was like, okay, I could think again. Cause dude, with my neck jacked up like that, I couldn't that, think that well. Okay. I, I couldn't write. Uh, you don't get the proper oxygen to your brain. You yeah. start thinking right. And you yeah. just start getting irritated. Just, I know exactly. It's just like that time. Your times you're laying in bed, you get agitated. You're like, okay, I gotta get up. I yeah. gotta get up. And and it's the same. You're just getting that. Yeah. Aggravated, and you just want to get out. But um, um, how many times a week? Do, or yeah, how many times a week do you do your stretches? Well, see, and that's one for your neck. Um. Usually, like I'm not, I'm not that great with it. Uh, for a while, I was doing yoga all the time in here, and my body was doing pretty good. But then I start losing my balance, and like so, this week I did jujitsu Monday morning at uh, 10th Planet uh, Long Beach um, with Jeremiah Vance, who's doing a seminar at our place on Saturday. And it was a great class, uh, but I did something stupid. I think I was telling you earlier where I was in a terrible position that was jacking up my already messed up neck, mm. and I wouldn't tap mm. when I should have. Like I probably should have, because it was. I knew it was a dangerous position. That's the fight. But I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's retarded. It's my ego. Um, so I'm <coughs> trying to get rid of that. Uh, and then that night I trained, and then, um, and so it's just overdoing that. It, it, it's when I don't have the balance. When because when I am doing, if I try to do jujitsu twice a day, which it almost never happens, I usually don't do that. Then I was like, I'm not going to come home. I don't have time to come home and really stretch and do the yoga or, or, or I'm just too tired or I make up. There's some excuse. Um, so I just have to find the nice mix. But if I if I start doing this where I'm I, – I, 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 last Friday, I think I forced myself to do yoga. And it was the best thing in the world because then it improved. Mm. Like my day, I decided instead of staying home and writing, I took my son to the, the movies or whatever. And Jake right. and I just hung out. And I realized, I was like, you know what? That's more important than me working right now. Right. Um, I mean, I, I would on, honestly for you, because you know what your past and what you've got to work on your neck and all your problems that you have, I'd implement a little bit more yoga, less jujitsu. Yeah. I know as much as you do. And then save yourself. Once you get back, you got to alter it, at least alter it back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, this week, you're just going to do strictly yoga next week, maybe two times a week yoga and then the rest all hardcore jujitsu mm-hmm. i mean whatever is easier for you yeah no i just have to find the right balance <clears throat> because mm-hmm. uh yeah man and i was thinking about that but I, but i am happy like i'm not dude I, i'll never say i'm good at jujitsu or anything like that um but i i'm able to usually ward off guys like half my age that are just trying to mm-hmm. take my head off and mm-hmm. sometimes they're like really good athletes and they're they train for a while and uh, i went against an awesome black belt the other day and i mean he destroyed me um, but, 
yeah, man, I just got to – think it's about finding that balance. Yeah, um, but you're, still able, you're able to do what you can. I mean, yeah, but what was cool was uh, Dr. Holland uh, got a great adjustment on my neck today, I my know, chiropractor. That's and good. so that uh, – yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy now. I, I know it's going to be tight tomorrow, but I'll do – I'll stretch tonight, and then <laughs> I will uh, – I'll stretch tomorrow, and if I have to, I'll go back in the hot tub and start the morning like that. So I was like an hour of taking care of myself right there, trying to heal myself. Instead of just, I mean, I don't know what the average person does. Maybe the average person is popping some pills for the pain, and maybe they go see yeah, a doctor. And like, it. it's like, yeah, I was like, you, 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 exactly, you, you still have that problem. And I was if, like, if you can get, you, you also need to go back to the to, to doing your um, your acupuncture and then yeah. getting that a good massage, dude. Yeah, you need to work that all out. Yeah, I could feel the tension there. There's definitely yeah, a lot. Like, it, it's just not going to go away on its own. Yeah, you got to get a deep tissue massage where they're just splitting that muscle apart. And just getting deep, but I it. thought that's why you <clears throat> came over. <laughs> no, nope. Then why, why are my clothes off? What the fuck? <laughs> you got problems. Jesus that's Christ. Why. I'm just accepting you for who you are, dude. That's, all. that's cool. Yeah, he's sitting here butt naked. I'm just sitting here <laughs> understanding him being a good friend that I am. <laughs> That's cool. I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, don't not judging. No, 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 no judging over here. Um, it, oh, we had a cool conversation earlier. We were going to record earlier, but we wouldn't know how much time there was, and we also knew that we had to work on our book. Uh, try not to die up in the motherfucking club. Um, I don't think we're keeping that motherfucking part. No. I, you never know, though. Um, I'm at a point now where I really don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so we were, we were, we were. <clears throat> finalizing lots of these scenes not finalizing them but we were uh structuring the whole book getting the whole plot figured out figuring out decision yeah. points and everything else and we we're hitting a couple points where uh you weren't sure whether or not we could do that like if we could go that dirty um but i just thought it was hilarious that one of the <laughs> uh, well i don't want to give away too much but one of the spoilers spoiler yeah spoiler alert one of the decisions, um, and, spoiler. And, and, I won't, I, and I won't say whether it's the correct decision or not, but is whether or not you stick an E tab up a girl's anus uh, on the dance floor. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, a that, you, uh, you get the uh, you get that intense uh, 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 action right away. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can say, and that doesn't come up right away. And I think he's already done some coke ahead of time, and he's already mm-hmm. had some drinks in him and yeah. everything. So, so he's partying. Yeah, so this guy's so partying it up. We're not saying that you should do that. I'm no, not saying no, if you no, find no. yourself in that situation <clears throat> that you should be sticking your finger up another stranger's butthole. Please consult your doctor at all times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe you want to. I don't know. Put some coating. I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't, dude, but but again, hey, I'm not going to love it. Oh, I'm not going to judge. That's that's what it comes down to. Um. Yeah. But so I think that's coming along. Uh, we talked a little bit more about uh, writing and how. How I would like you to just like on on the ride home today, you're gonna just record in your car uh, mm-hmm. the first scene or whatever, or start developing this this <clears> stuff. <throat> but how I want you just to see it, it's first person, present tense. So pretty much just how you you, and that's one reason why I wanted to work with you because you already see stuff like that. You've helped me with scenes, um, and so it's just putting what you're seeing just onto paper. Just become that main character and mm-hmm. whatever you whatever that you're seeing, whatever you're hearing whatever you're feeling like that's what that's what is it going into the book right so right, it's right, going right. to be your finger getting all warm and you know so you, you return to those <laughs> moments sensation dude and, and, and write what you know so if you don't remember like maybe you just got to play with your own <laughs> hey, there you go play with a poop shooter <laughs> But, uh, dude, it is always weird writing those scenes because you, you told me like, oh, can I, can we do this? Can we, do I was like, and I told you a couple, I told you about before bright side, which mm-hmm. gets kind of dirty. Um, right. Oh, the Messiah book. Holy yeah, shit, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, um, we got, uh, sex <clears throat> yeah. scenes, you know, not church not, and me being not a writer. Don't, I, I'm not too aware of what you can and do and what's the, that doesn't sound good or what does, but right. And I always worry, I always worry about, I think I worry way too much. I worry that, uh, like, my stuff isn't dirty at all compared to anything, like, really dirty. Or, and the same thing even with my horror. Like, in my my horror is pretty tame, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but in my mind, it's like, well, it's still a lot of death and darkness right. and everything else. But, uh, and that's shit. Just, I mean, that's what makes the beauty of the book. You're able to, uh, you know, touch in those zones that nobody does and say things that people think about would love to say but can't through the balls because then they go 
what's wrong with you? Are you fucking weird, dude? What the yeah. Boy? They, they prejudge you. Yeah. So they, no. they're reading your book is somewhere uh, easy for them to... Well, and, and, and that's one thing I was I was saying with you earlier. Um, so, <clears throat> so much of this, I mean, you can write. We could write something um, that we have no experience with. <clears throat> that's possible. You could look shit up. Um, but I don't know how legitimate it is. Uh, we were talking about, like, the coke scenes. Like, I couldn't write those right now because I don't remember those times. Like, maybe if I really think about it. And, and I haven't done coke for a long, long time. I'll never do it again, probably. Um, lost a good friend because of it. But uh, so it's hard for me to go back to that. Like, how long did it take before you feel? And what does that even feel like? So how am I going to write about this guy doing that? So and not that you have a lot of experience right, with it or with ecstasy or with these other things. But if you've been around it a lot more and if you've been around, if you had friends or if you, yeah, you and being in the scene that I've, you know, been around. Yeah. You know, from the nightclubs to the uh, the music scene. Yeah. You know, rocking stage, you see some crazy shit. Yeah. And so that's what's going shit. into the book is like those crazy things are going into the book and we just twist them. And so it's like, yeah, that shit does happen. Like there's showing some ODs and yeah, and there's all, some all truth that kind to of it. There's yeah. some truth to it. Yeah. Know, so things that I've seen and, and, and it was, it, you're able to write about it and just with a little bit more of a twist to it. But, you know, you yeah. can pick out there the, the reels and the do's and the don'ts. Yeah, man. So I'm, I'm pumped. We still need to sign a contract um, at some point or, or we don't. I just screw you over. I'm cool with that, too. We can Dude. do it on it. I know. Um, I just sent off the oh, contract nice. to uh, Tim Lasik, uh, which is cool. It, What's the contract about? Uh, the contract says, um, you pretty make much, a million, I get, uh, yeah, 500, yeah. I, <laughs> no, no. Well, it depends on how much money you I'll take up front. 000. It depends on how much money you take up front. Uh, that's funny. But I don't know how much money, uh, try not to die up in the club will make. We'll see. Hopefully we'll have a pretty good, uh, following. Dude, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think, I think people are going to like them. I think like, I know Tim's, Tim's book is going to be really good. Like I read his development thing. I was like, wow. I was like, this is going to be a smart book. He's an intelligent guy. He's a writer. Um, he just needs a little nudge, and then I'll help him with all the death scenes, and like it's gonna be a good book. So it's it's a it's a weird change of pace. Um, like today, it was trying to die up in the club, and I did a little bit of unlocking the cage, just some last minute checks or whatever. Uh, I'm laying off un- ain't no messiah until I'm completely completely done with unlocking the cage, which I'm hoping to just be maybe another week or two. Uh, but man, I'm I'm really digging I'm that book. I'm excited, dude. I can't wait till that thing's done. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I want to so put long. it out, but <clears throat> and, and even this last read through, I still have to have another edit on, like a line edit. But on this one, like I'm going through it, I'm just making sure it all makes sense. That I'm actually proud of it. Um, my good friend Carl Domini, um, he was an assistant at Brown and big MMA fan. I had him read it, and I was. I was kind of worried about his response. I was like, okay, this dude is super smart, very intellectual, um, an MMA fan. Um, is he going to be bored by it? Is he going to like it? Is he going to, like, yeah, because I was telling him, I was like, anything that you don't like, any boring parts, like, let me know. Um, and he's still going to give me some notes, and he'll tell me the parts that probably need to be cut. Um, but overall, like, he was really digging it. Um, nice, and, and one dude, thing nice. he said, though, I, I wasn't really uh, – He's I not blowing I, smoke I up your ass. Well, he? no, 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 and he's and that's what he said, and I made sure of that. I was like, oh. "Hey, man, I want your brutal honesty," and he wants me to put out the best book possible too, which is good. So, um, and that's the talk I've had with a couple of friends. Like, look, I was like, be brutally honest. Like, you could tell me, "Yeah, I don't like this," or, or or the whole thing kind of sucks, or or it needs to be sped up. And because, dude, everyone has their own opinion. And I'm not worried. Like, you might not like story B. But fucking, and you think story A is awesome, but this next person thinks story A fucking sucks, and they've right. heard that kind of shit a thousand times, but story right. B is fucking awesome, or whatever. Right, right. So, I don't take shit personally, um, but one of the things he said was, um, like, whether, he's like, whether or not you know this, he's like, this book is about you. And that, that was something that I didn't want, you know, I just wanted it to be about these fighters, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of me in there. I mean, I'm the one going through it all, so, and he, I mean, and that, for him, like, he thought that was good. So, that's it. Um, but what else? There was something else I want to talk about. I don't know what it was. We touched on yoga for Girl Scouts, right? No, we, yeah. And then go, oh, like, oh, didn't, we didn't talk, talk about, about that. No, oh. no, you had to tell on this one. Yeah, man. I was just thinking. I was like, that's the... My, 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 my but it's mother, big of you, dude. My mother-in-law called me last week. And uh, my sister-in-law, <clears throat> she teaches uh, Girl Scouts. So, my niece is in there and 14 other girls. And Olivia... She kind of sometimes she's in it, sometimes it's not like just an honorary member. Uh, this year she hasn't been doing anything, 
but I guess this year, this week is like a health week, and so they need to get a, a patch for being healthy. Um, and uh, so they invited me to teach them yoga, <laughs> and and I told everyone like I do, I, I I'm not a yoga instructor, but I was like, there's something I can I can show them the basics. I can just share this, and uh, so I thought it was funny. I was like, I asked Olivia if I should do it, and she's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, no, why not? Like, who cares? And that's when I realized I was like, I told my wife, I was like, no, I was like, this is proof that I give zero fucks. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like I, I just don't give a fuck anymore. Like, I'm doing yoga for Girl Scouts. Mm. Uh, but but still, dude. I was thinking about that this morning because uh, and because there's absolutely no part of me anymore that's like even hesitates. I'm like, eh, whatever. Like, I'd even do that if it was at the park or whatever else. Because I was like, I know what I'm giving them is good. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, I'm... That's on a positive note, absolutely. And and that's what I was thinking. I was like, even if it was just my daughter that is getting this from me, one, she's seen that me as a man can go and teach yoga. Yeah. um, That even though I don't know it that well, I'm... I'm, I'll go and get in front of the plane. Yeah, I'll get in front of a group and and teach it to them. And then everything I was... So so much of what I was saying was aimed at her too. Um, I was talking about the revelations I have and why I like it and how it makes me a better father and how I want... like. When I'm doing yoga, lots of times I'll be thinking about, yeah, I need to do more stuff with my daughter. This is what I want. And so I was able to share that. I made the, um, it was only like 20 minutes, but I, I made it more about meditation and taking the time to breathe and working on breathing. And, and, uh, cause I think that's something that these girls probably don't get a lot of. Yeah, I think, I think we're on our huge. phones. I think we're either TV, phone, book, uh, radio. There's always some distraction. distraction Other, yeah, yeah, there's always something fucking going on, and yeah. especially with kids. Yeah. You know, you don't take time to listen to yourself or just breathe and relax. And uh, I know as an adult, I don't. But I was like, so even if I just helped one of those kids, uh, you know, yeah. I was like, then that's cool. Yeah, you don't know who you're touching in their lives but as 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 they, as they get older. They're like, you might completely open a whole new page to them. For yeah. them, you know that's hot yeah I, so, think I commend you for that yeah so i was like even if it just helped them with uh i gave them an assignment i i, I told them their assignment for tomorrow was mm-hmm. to research uh nose breathing how much better is it for them to breathe through their nose compared to through their mouth right. something i have a huge problem with and uh, i said i'm not even gonna tell you anything i said but just research that tomorrow and and then i showed them some ways to to work on the nose breathing Did you show them how to do that the the, the slow counts for them to go to sleep uh, how to calm down prior to yeah know, well i mean i mean you know what i'm talking about yeah. like the, yeah. just the mellow stage yep nice. and so and then i mean I, and i and i pushed them too and i was like okay let's make a game out of it and see how long you can hold your breath and and trying to do the relaxing and i told them what i had hit this morning um and uh yeah so it was it was, nice. it was cool. It was a fun little thing. It, it was kind of cute that Jake, my son, he wanted to come. He really wanted to do yoga yeah. with me, um, and he would be an excellent role model. He, yeah. he gets down and he does it. Yeah. Um, but uh, he stayed and played with Uncle Nato. So. Yeah, that's my that's my little road dog right there. <laughs> yeah. In fact, he wants to come on the podcast and say a couple things. So maybe we'll let him introduce a story. Yeah. Um, I need to figure out what the story is going to be. I don't even know. And what else? Excuse me. Um, I forgot. Um, Olivia is going to perform for you later. She was going to sing for you. Oh, yeah? I'm going to play. She does. She loves singing uh, Scarborough Fair. Um, oh, I got to hear and, this. Uh, and that's, I know it on guitar. Like, I'll, I'll probably have to look at it on musician. And I suck at it. Like, it's not going to sound good. But it's good enough, and it's just cool to have her singing along with it. So, yeah, that's hot. Yeah, just the fact that she will do it. So, um, mm-hmm. we should call Jake. Uh, we're not going to put that recording on. I don't know. Maybe we'll try. Re- we'll Why do not, the recording man? of me butchering a guitar and my daughter. Why not? Having fun on vocals. Why not? It's a, yeah. they only they well, only get them the small ones. They, dude. they they might they might sing some metal for us today uh, oh, in the really? car ride, dude, to the chiropractor. We had on oh it was Judas Priest um, and uh, <laughs> they love some of the newer Judas Priest and, and lots of the old stuff too, but they hadn't heard Hell Bent for Leather, um, and then we just got started talking other thing and then Jake started singing he's like Hell Bent Hell Bent for Sugar <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's right but he just made it up on his own I, I told him what Hell Bent meant I was like yeah and then they were talking about oh the song Sugar by System of a Down had gone uh-huh. on and so he didn't like that song. And so he just start made up his own. He started just singing, uh, yeah, <laughs> hell bent for sugar, hell bent, hell bent That's for right. sugar. He's got he's, they they got their own mind, man. Uh, dude, all we've been doing lately he's is smart. Dude. Is playing uh, the sing uh, movie and mm-hmm. the, or or clips from it on YouTube. Uh, he's singing those songs like crazy and dancing. Uh, yeah. yeah, man, he's a he's a character. He's just he's going for it. Um, 
Hold on real quick. Okay. Uh, tell the folks a story, um, and I'm going to call my son down. Well, well, he goes, I'm going to be sitting here for a minute. Yeah, not a boring story. I don't know what kind of a story to talk about. The story tonight is Midnight Snack. All right. Can you say the story tonight? The story we're listening to tonight? What is it? Midnight Snack. Midnight Snack. Oh, that was excellent. Thank you, buddy. Thank Do you, you want to tell everyone goodbye? Say goodbye. Goodbye. Midnight Snack. Nick Decker sat on the toilet and flipped through the latest muscle magazine, searching for the model with the tiniest bikini. He settled on brunette draped across the kind of chiseled monster Decker had given up on ever becoming. The brunette wasn't even as wide as this guy's leg. Decker froze when he heard a rusty squeak. It didn't sound like the ward's front door, but the A and B wing doors were locked and no one else with keys was in the building. It had to be someone from the swing shift or one of the nurses from the front unit. Maybe it was that cutie with the short black hair. He didn't rush off for the can for just anyone, but he would for her. There were footsteps, or a soft jingle, coming from the ward. Decker was about to yell that he'd be out in a minute. Then he realized he might not have locked the control booth. Grounds for termination. He didn't typically forget, but he'd been slacking off, especially since they'd stuck him back on graveyard. Decker dropped the magazine and cleaned up. He ignored the sign telling employees to wash their hands and walked out of the bathroom as he finished buckling his pants. An elderly doctor with a scraggly gray beard was struggling to find the right key to open the B-wing gate. Keeping an eye on the doctor, Decker walked to the unlocked control room door and slipped inside. Speaking through the mesh wiring that served as a window, he casually asked, Can I help you? Startled, the doctor looked up and stuttered, uh, uh, no, I, uh, no, forgot which, I, I didn't realize anyone was here. Decker took a seat in his raised chair, positioned himself for a better look at the grizzled doctor. I'm sorry, I don't believe I've seen you before. You work in one of the other wards? The doctor shook his head and shoved the keys back into his lab coat. Uh, no, I'm sorry, officer, I, I'm new. Just got hired today. Decker didn't mention he was only a guard and not an actual law enforcement officer. Yeah, I heard they hired someone. You're taking O'Malley's place, right? Uh, oh, yes, I believe that was the name on my office door. About time they hired a replacement. Been short a doctor all week. I'm Nick, but most just call me Decker. Oh, I'm Dr. Hoffman. The doctor stepped up to the window, and a peculiar smell wafted through the mesh. Unable to place the scent, Decker asked, How much did they tell you? Tell? About O'Malley, the gig. Oh, not much. The woman who hired me seemed preoccupied. Is there something I should know? No, I was just asking, Decker said. I was kind of hoping you'd tell me. O'Malley just stopped coming in. No one's heard from him. I take it that would be strange. He just didn't seem the type to up and quit. But hell, it's not like people need a reason to leave this shithole. Oh? Decker laughed. <laughs> no, it's not all that bad. You'll get used to it. As long as you don't mind being around these crazy fuckers. Uh, not that... I, I, I mean... <laughs> no, it's okay. I have grown boys. I'm well versed in insanity. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. Still, sorry for my language. Uh, one of the reasons I'm here at midnight. They keep telling me I gotta be careful of what I say in front of folks. Especially working for the state. Oh, yes. I know this too well. I used to be over at Weatherly. Weatherly? Shit. Shit, must have been some time ago. That place burned down, what, 20 years ago? Hoffman thought about it a second. Yes. I suppose it's been a while. The doctor's dingy lab coat looked as if it went back to his days at Weatherly. Decker asked, Where else did you work? Oh, all over. I've never been one to stay too long in one place. Well, glad they brought you in. 
damn budget's so tight, I was half expecting they'd let these bastards run the place themselves. Practically already do. Dr. Hoffman laughed a little too hard at the lame joke. Decker didn't think he was being made fun of, but he didn't like it either way. Seeming to sense his unease, the doctor said, I am sorry to disturb you this evening. Yeah, there's normally not a doctor here this late. The doctor shifted his weight. I don't actually start until Monday, but the lady that hired me, I forgot her name, said I could come in to check out the place. I know it sounds like something a teenager would say, but I guess I'm kind of nervous about my first day. I've actually been on sort of a sabbatical. Decker finally saw why they'd hired this old-timer. He was probably dirt cheap. And although Decker wasn't the most sympathetic of men, Dr. Hoffman sort of reminded him of his grandfather. Nothing to be nervous about, Decker said. We've all been the new guy at some point. I thought maybe coming this late might allow me to get a feel for the place, you know, when it's not so busy. I like to know where things are. Helps me not to seem so much like a bumbling fool. Well, don't worry. Expectations are pretty low down here. Yes, well, if it's all the same, I was hoping to possibly get a tour. Obviously, it would be up to you. I mean, if you're busy, I can always... Decker studied the old man. He did seem eager. That's something Decker wasn't used to seeing in here. The poor guy probably didn't have anyone to go home to. Yeah, sure. Time for my rounds anyway. I just need to see your ID. Dr. Hoffman patted his lab coat, checked his pockets, his face reddening. Oh, dear. I don't believe I brought it. I must have left it in the office or possibly in my car. I don't think I brought it home, but I was in such a rush to get here, I, I can't remember. I can go look. I'll only be a bit. Now, nah, forget it. You're here now. I, I don't want you getting in trouble. No trouble. You showed me your ID and I verified it. Simple as that. We'll scratch each other's backs around here. Oh, I do appreciate it. That's very kind, the doctor said. Not a problem. Let's get started, Decker said. He grabbed his metal flashlight and stepped out of the control room. Decker started toward B-Wing, but turned back when he noticed Dr. Hoffman wasn't following. Is there a difference between the two wings? The doctor asked. Yeah. A-wing is where we keep the semi-treatable schizos. B-wing is a whole other story. All the psychos. Real sick fuckers. That is until you cure them, right? Yes, of course. Dr. Hoffman followed Decker through the gate and down a dark hallway. Is it just you down here? Yeah, just me and the loons. What if something happens? I mean, if there's a problem. You getting scared, Doc? Oh, I'm... Oh, I'm always a little on edge. Don't worry. These cells stay locked unless I open them. Decker fingered the radio on his belt. And I got this. We've got guards stationed in every ward. Someone's always less than a minute away. Unless they're in the bathroom. Decker chuckled. Yeah, I guess. He shoved his key into the lock on the metal door and had to jiggle it. Dr. Hoffman was practically on top of him, his disgusting aftershave even more pungent in this confined space. Decker finally recognized the smell. It was Sandoval. His old boss at the coroner's office used to slather himself with the stuff. Decker locked the door behind them. Now just stay close. Is it always this dark? Wing lights go off at nine. Decker pointed at the two open stalls on the right side of the hall. Here are the showers. Here are the showers. It's mainly for the incoming inmates. Most of the long terms rarely use them. Hygiene isn't a priority when you never see a woman. Decker stopped and turned to the doctor. Look, I know you worked at Weatherly, but these guys can get a little rowdy. I just want to warn you. I appreciate it. But as I mentioned, I raised three sons. I'm sure it'll be nothing I haven't heard before. I don't know, Doc. These are some twisted fellas. 
So were my boys. They passed the first set of dimly lit cells when the taunting began. It started softly, a whisper from the first two cells, number one on the right and ten on the left. But the rest of the wing was quick to join in. The hallway filled with the incessant wails of the inmates, Decker's own little rainforest of crazy. Out of the rambling nonsense came the inmates' favorite. Here comes Decker. Decker the pecker checker. Decker dicker, penis licker. The inmates continued the barrage, and Dr. Hoffman said, Quite colorful, aren't they? Yeah, not very original. Decker continued past the next set of cells. Keep it down, gentlemen. Don't make this a long night. An inmate's body banged against the metal door. With his face pressed against the square glass window, the guy screamed, Shut the fuck up, Dicker! Decker pressed the flashlight to the window and flicked the button. The light blasted the man's contorted face and he fell backwards with a scream, his hands covering his eyes. Decker laughed and holstered his flashlight. That asshole never learns. That happens often? Uh, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. Just keeps him quiet. Oh no, it doesn't, Ducker! You stupid motherfucker! Decker spun around and shouted, You want the restraints? I swear to Christ, Homer, I'll strap you in one for the next month. Oh, I love a good strap-on, but I'm more interested in the real deal, like the one Daddy's gonna shove in your ass. Decker clenched his fists and started for the door, but he remembered the doctor. This wasn't a battle he could win, and not the best way to make an impression. He kept walking and called over his shoulder. Knock it off and go to bed. They passed rooms four and seven, and a soft chanting began. I know something you don't know. I know something you don't know. It grew louder and louder until it seemed the walls were shaking. Decker's face turned redder, but strangely, he noticed, Dr. Hoffman didn't seem unnerved by the mind-numbing screams. Decker yelled, I'm not kidding, this ends now. The chanting grew. Do you mind if I try? Dr. Hoffman asked. Decker shrugged his shoulders, tried to hide his embarrassment and frustration. Excuse me, young men, the doctor said in a surprisingly firm and even tone. Please listen to my words, for I will only say this once. The chanting quieted. Only a few murmurs filtered out. Thank you. My name is Dr. Hoffman, and I want you to know I'm looking forward to meeting each and every one of you when the time is right. But right now, I need your assistance. I would like to continue my tour without interruption. If you can do that, I promise it will not go unappreciated. Do I make myself clear? Decker couldn't believe it. Except for a couple of hoots and hollers, the ward was silent. The ward was never silent. These psychos didn't listen to anyone but themselves. He didn't want to tell that to Dr. Hoffman, though, so he just mentioned something about the cafeteria opening in a few hours. The doctor didn't seem to be paying attention. He was focused on the last door on the right. I wouldn't get too close to there, Doc. His food flap's broken. You get too close and that prick could reach out and grab you. Dr. Hoffman kept his distance, but bent forward to look through the window. Something was definitely stirring behind the glass. He doesn't use his nightlight? Doesn't have one. Broke it. We replaced it a couple of times, and every time he'd break it. Guess he didn't like the light. Yeah, I, and I called maintenance to fix the flap, but I can't even get one of those guys to sneeze down here, especially with this one. Oh? Name's Carter. A real freak. Takes three guards to restrain him. Hoffman went up on his tiptoes to get a better look. Have you tried talking to him? Yeah, I read him bedtime stories every night. Come on, Doc, we should get back. Still balancing on his tiptoes, Dr. Hoffman said, Just one minute. 
He held out his hand and asked to borrow the flashlight. Decker handed it over and Hoffman shined it through the window. Oh, I believe he's scared. Yeah, trust me, Doc, he ain't. Antisocial personality disorder. Fucker eats people's faces. Interesting. Doc, I really wouldn't get too close. It's okay. I can see him on the bunk. If he moves, I'll be sure to get back. Hoffman bent down so he could look through the opened flap. Hello, son. How are you doing tonight? A loud thrashing erupted in the room. The metal frame of the bunk clanged as the inmate threw his body up and down. Decker said, He's been doing that all week. Stays on his bed and then acts crazy every time we do a check. It's like he gets so excited he can't control it. Kid's just got a lot of energy, Dr. Hoffman said a little too merrily. Well, he won't eat shit. Tosses out every meal we give him. Well, he's just peculiar. Dr. Hoffman pulled something out of his pocket. Decker thought it looked like a little hamburger, but it was hard to tell. It was obvious that Dr. Hoffman was trying to feed Carter. Decker grabbed the doctor's arm. The hell are you doing? I told you he's crazy. Oh, we're all a little crazy. Dr. Hoffman's eyes gleamed. Decker didn't understand it, but he looked taller. It runs in the family. Carter's lips pressed against the open slot. He whispered, Dad! Decker realized this man wasn't a doctor. Hoffman pulled out the keys from his pocket. Each one was caked in dried flesh. They hung from a little black rabbit's foot keychain, exactly like O'Malley used to carry. Decker tried to block the key heading toward his face but the small metal tip plunged through his pupil. The inmates roared as Decker crumpled to the floor. They continued to shout every time the keys carved into his neck, face, and hands. Maniacal laughter filled the wing as the inmates banged their fist against the glass. Hoffman stood and faced them. Now, now, you'll all taste him soon enough. But my son goes first. Hoffman yanked the keys off Decker's belt. He licked each one before trying them in Carter's door. Finally, the lock turned, and the door creaked open. Carter fell into his father's arms. Yes, yes, Hoffman said. Now don't let this good food go to waste. Carter fell onto Decker's wheezing body and ripped off a chunk of Decker's cheek. Hoffman continued down the wing and called back. Just make sure to leave some for your brothers.